It's not working. It should. We're live, you guys. We're live. Welcome, oh. welcome. Dog Bar Comedy. It's Tuesday night. I'm Wild Joe. And uh, we've got our regular hosts in the house, Carol Newell. Woo! Woo! And Mr. C. Yeah. Oh. And, and a lot of fun special guests, new and old. So let's get to our theme song. We have our theme song by the late and great GT. And then we will get into our interview portion of the show where we get in the deep dive. I wake up when the sun goes down. I wake up when the sun goes down. <laughs> I want to do some comedy. I want to do some comedy. <laughs> at a dive bar. At a dive bar. At a dive bar. At a dive bar. I can't say what I want to say. I can't say what I want to say. I'm Santa. <laughs> in my house as they're beating down the door trying to get in. Carol, uh, how about you give us your show schedule and what you have coming up? <laughs> well, uh, this Saturday I'll be back at the Baja Grill. They built me a brand new stage. It's very delightful, you guys. You should come to the Baja Grill with the $5 White Claws, $5 Margaritas, $4 beers, and uh, lots of tacos. Is a good time. And then, of course, I'm back with Dive Bar Comedy next Tuesday. I did uh, end up losing that place in Beverly Hills, so I won't be there anymore. <laughs> but I am doing uh, the World's Best Laugh every Monday night, so come for that next Monday. And then coming up on June 3rd, I'll be in Bakersfield, you guys, for a show in Bakersfield. That's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, uh, so you if you're in Bakersfield. Or a gun or anything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'll t i'll take my gat don't worry okay. uh it'll be all okay. <laughs> and uh june 17th i'm gonna have a show in uh los angeles area near washington and uh crenshaw it's at a uh, art studio that's gonna be our uh lgbtq show for the month of june and then i'll be back at berkshire house on june 22nd so those are upcoming shows. I'm at uh, Baja pretty much every Saturday and then uh, with the dive bar on Tuesday and on the Zoom on Mondays. Back to you, Josie. All right. I want to know, uh, why did you get kicked out of Attitude Lounge? That was a nice <laughs> For too much attitude. <laughs> too much attitude. No, uh, it wasn't uh, working for them financially. So, yeah. Mm. Well, if you're trying to you know what? They didn't really promote their, fries, you their got some food and drinks. Exactly, but you both what, said. Okay, I <laughs> we're both talking. What'd you say, Mr. C? I said when you're charging sixteen dollars for some goddamn plantain French fries, you got some fucking nerve. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And they also the, the food was kind of like off to the side, and there was a girl standing there, but she didn't really look that into it. I mean, they weren't really pushing the food or drinks. I don't. Exactly. I think I did buy one beer. Yeah, you know, out of politeness, but yeah, yeah, yeah and they're expensive compelled. too. Expensive. Yeah. I'm, I'm super expensive. You know what I can do in Tijuana for the kind of money I spend in that place? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. 
So I, I want to talk a little bit about our show we had on Tuesday. We filmed it. We're working on our sizzle reel for dive bar comedy. And it got crazy at Lotus Lounge. Mr. C. Yes, there was almost a fight. Yeah. Woo! Mr. C, give us a recap. Oh, well, we have a comedian that's named Zoe Johnson. He's one of our family favorites. And then we have Miss Del Harrison, who was a goddess. Well, she had made a joke about how certain men date certain women and they're not really leaders because of it. Well, there was a guy in the back who happened to date those women and he felt a certain kind of way. Now, anytime we have a troll combative situation in Dive Bar Comedy, number one, I load my weapon. <laughs> uh, and number two, if Zoe is there, I have seen him do this at least 20 times, he cannot resist going at the guy in the back. I know the minute he got the microphone, I said, oh my God, Zoe is going to get on this guy about being sensitive about it. And he's not going to let the guy go. So the guy is like one of those pimp Chicago. So he wears like, he had like a two piece linen on, but it was like a pair of shorts and a shirt. And then his hair is slicked back and went out, but they don't got no socks on. And he got them slip on loafers. Like, hey, oh man, I'm a man. I'm a layer. I do whatever the hell. And his own was teasing like, all right, man, calm down. You feel sensitive. So, you know, they got belly to belly. Now to tell you something more. Yes, it really was going to be a fight. Zoe called me. After that, I said, Carl, I was ready to punch that motherfucker in his goddamn mouth. And I said, yo, dude, it's dive bar comedy. If you can survive this shit, you can crush anyone. And that's what the lesson to be learned is. That guy looked yeah, like he was guy wearing was college. About how he killed people, too. He, he really <laughs> seemed like he was telling the truth. He was like, I killed people. You know, oh, yeah, no, 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 he definitely had a, a, a couple of bodies in a, in a Chattahoochee River down in Louisiana. I'm that guy that. looked like he was wearing college twin size sheets. That's what I'm, that's all I'm saying. That's that two piece linen yeah. look. Yeah, girl, girl, you don't know, girl. You want your bills paid? Well, for about $15 <laughs> worth of, of French fries, I can make it worth your while. <laughs> and for that, we also had our oldest heckler ever. She looked like she must be in her 90s. This teeny tiny little little old lady with, with like a, a hunched back and she was drunk sitting at the bar. We, we thought she was with the guy next to her, but apparently she just probably met him at the bar. She didn't seem to know anybody and she was shouting out. And that was pretty crazy too. She was she probably on the country, wasn't she? Wasn't she from another country or something? Maybe originally, yeah. She said she was, I think, from Peru or some Argentina. place. Argentina. Yeah, Argentina. Somewhere where people get stabbed for fun. <laughs> anyway, it was fun. It was a, it was a crazy wild show, and that's how we like it. So anyway, let's meet our crazy and wild comedians. Uh, I'm just gonna go around with who I see first. I see French accent. Hey right there, what's how going on? It? Oh, just hanging out, being groovy, you know, in, yeah. in my, little, my little house domicile space thing in the middle of the nowhere. Where exactly are you again? I'm in the Black Hills of South Dakota. Wait, why they gotta be black? Well, it, I didn't name them. You got, oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, got a, you got a time machine, that shit. Get, get, oh, get them. The Buffalo thing. I'm sensitive right now. My fault. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a beautiful spot though, man. It's weird because it's green, but from a distance they look shady. I guess I don't know. It's oh, uh, it's oh. nice up here. There's deer in my yard. The deer are always hanging out in my yard, and they're snobs. Like they're so tame, they're snobs. Like I'll throw them an apple, and they'll eat the apple. But if it's like a little old, they're like, no, no. What what are you, what are you doing with this apple? Get this out of my get this out of my face. They don't run or nothing. So uh, what's the comedy scene like out there? Um. Well, <laughs> people do know how to laugh um one or two of them do i mean there's some people that have heard of comedy you know they, they know it as an abstract concept they know that sometimes people tell jokes and others laugh at them no there's a little comedy out here a little bit of it in sioux falls i've been working with a couple of midwest booking agencies and they'll throw me a bone here and there every now and again a little dive bar or a theater or something and uh, <laughs> that's been all right um i managed to go down to florida and i managed to go to um California in the same month and then I went to Colorado and I did a Cinco de Mayo thing and that was the best show of the bunch crazily enough it was in Greeley Colorado that was a that was a really fun show but I had the other the other shows were um you know they were an experience for sure got pulled over twice uh didn't get a ticket either time um but uh had a fun road adventure well that's exciting getting around 
absolutely. Coast Next to coast in one month. You got to stop by and see us. I would have, but I was just like on a budget and going in and out. And here's what I did see coming into Ventura. Somebody crashed a semi truck into a gas station. And I don't mean like it was into the building where where the like behind where the cashier would work. And you you could see when you were driving by where it had knocked over the shelves on the inside. And I don't know how that it was a semi just in like the movies. It was crazy. That was uh, I've never seen that before. And that was right when I got into California. So I don't know how y'all are dealing with it out there. All I hear is Mad Max shenanigans. Well, I've never seen that before. So maybe it was just your luck. So. Well, me neither. But that's the thing. Like I was there four years in an RV. I never saw anything like that. And then I'm just coming in for one gig. And it's like, oh, my gosh, Terminator 2. What the what the hell is this? Who crashed a truck into a bill? Who was assassinating this Arco? Wow. Well, yeah. we, we would love to see you. Maybe if we ever hit the road, we'll come to you and oh, yeah. uh, check out the country. How, how yeah, far is your something. closest airport? Uh, Rapid City is about 40 miles from where I'm at right now. That's an inter I think that's an international, actually. Rapid City probably shouldn't be having one of those, but I'm pretty sure it's an international airport. I think you can fly right from LA. Are you right. anywhere near Sturgis? Yeah, I'm about 12 miles away. There's some shows there. I'm, Did uh, you go to the biker rally? Last year I did. I uh, I opened for Bag Lady Sue. It was pretty fun. We uh, we did a little veterans club. Uh, it's weird. Bikers, you know, I did three shows at biker rallies last summer, and that's the first time I've been flashed by guys. But the thing is, <laughs> I mean, they'll just run through, and you. It's hard to compete with that. Not. It's just. I mean, it doesn't. It's not a quality thing. It's a anyway. Um, so that's fun, but it's it's weird. They like you. They 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 do like you, maybe too much. Wow. All right. Well, uh, thanks for coming on our show again. Let's get back to uh, Margaret Dodds. Margaret, uh, first time on our show. How's it going? Yeah. Thanks for having me. Where are you? I'm in Hollywood. I'm in LA. Perfect. All right. But I'm not from here. I grew up in Maine, and then I I basically identify as a New Yorker. I lived there. Uh, for my whole adult life until very recently. And then where were you when you decided to get up on stage and start stand-up? Oh, gosh. I, I was in the Lower East Side doing like little uh, of Manhattan, doing little uh, hole-in-the-wall open mics back in the day. So you, how has it been going? I mean, ever since then, we're still doing hole-in-the-walls, by the way. <laughs> what are you up to in your comedy hey, career? As long as I'm doing comedy, there, there'll be holes in the wall for, for me, I'm sure. Um, yeah, I'm just hunkering down in my, my Hollywood place with my cats and, you know, trying to regain some social skills uh, after the pandemic. And, you know, like I, I think a lot of people are. So I'm enjoying... Uh, a hot cup of throat coat tea. Would you like to hear the, the little saying? Okay. Yeah, the little proverb. He who wants a rose must respect the thorn. A Persian proverb. I don't know who he is, but. You know, I love throat coat tea. It's like the only kind it. of tea I ever drink. And I never noticed that they had a proverb on the tag. They got proverbs. Wow. No. I want to start reading it. Yeah, I want to write some alternative throat coat proverbs. I'm going to get on that. <laughs> well, you're, you're a comedian, so you could probably do some uh, funny fortune cookies or proverbs and uh, sell them. Yeah. So, so uh, all right. Are you ever getting out of your house or you're just, you're still quarantined at home? Oh no, I get out, I go to Sprouts, I buy groceries, it's exciting. Um, I go for walks, I, uh, I do cat sitting and dog walking and a whole bunch of like really fascinating, exciting adventures in my life. <laughs> well, I'm glad you made it on and it's fun to virtually meet you. And yeah, uh, you too. can't wait to see your comedy. All right, who else we got? Bruce McCarthy, uh-oh, I can't see you through that big cloud of smoke. <laughs> Yo, what's up? <laughs> How you doing? What's up? How's your bird? 
He's quiet, but he'll 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 start. You know, in the middle of, middle of my thing, dude. He'll he'll start freaking going off because he wants to join in on the conversation. He actually laughs. He'll go. Ha, 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 ha. He has timing. He knows when to laugh and shit. I don't know how. I don't know. Well, that's when I'll know that I'm really killing is if I get your bird to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I see you have the I see you have the center part. You know, um, I don't I'm know what to old. do with it. I, I didn't know the side part went out of style after like 20, 30 years of being the only thing. And now it's only center parts for the last like I'm so embarrassed. year or two. Like, well, really? if you have short hair, there's, you can't do a center part with short yeah. hair because you'll look goofy. But anyway. <laughs> I, like, I have no clue. It's just, you know what? what is it? We've been doing two years of pandemic and this is the hair I got now. Dude, so fuck it. <laughs> well, you're, you're right with the trend. It's called curtain bangs, and there it is. It just looks like a curtain. You look like uh, uh, you look like a stage in in itself. Your face is like on stage, and the curtains are your hair. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what so, Joanna, what? Uh, what, what what are you doing lately? Oh God, I'm always babysitting my kids, and I'm working a day job too. And I'm doing oh. my comedy shows and I'm doing all kinds of stuff. What oh, are you yeah, doing, dude. Bruce? Uh, I, I got to mute myself because they're beating down the door. Tell <laughs> us where you're located, where you're located and how the scene is there. All right. I'm, uh, I'm located in Carbondale, Illinois. The scene is, uh, the scene is actually kind of good and stuff. We're having our own little, little things with uh, ego and stuff like that going on. But uh, the scene is good. The scene, the scene is good. I, 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 I just did a show of 250 people taped. We actually had, it was a plan in place. It was a grand plan. It was great to bring in people from LA so they could tape a, a special. Think about it. Picture it. Picture it, everyone, right now. Fucking 250 <laughs> people. All right? All going, ha, 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 Will Smith slapping you. All sorts of shit. Right, dude? And it's filmed and you have your own special and stuff. How much is that worth? You know, 4K of uh, 4k uh, a 4k film that's worth thousands and all you have to do is come on down here and perform what? and you get it and you get a film nice wait I a think. second all you have to do is go there and perform and you get a film Who, who's yep. invited to this you are well hey maybe maybe i'll come yeah Where you are. i've been desperately hoping to put dive bar comedy on the road oh fuck like my Let's dream to go to it. different dive bars there and visit our, visit our virtual comedians in real life. Oh my God, dude. This is, this is, yes. Yes. Are you coming, mister? Yeah, mister, will you come? Cool? Yeah, we yeah. got to meet Bruce McCarthy. Yeah, and you know what? These people, these people here in Carbondale, Illinois would love to meet a black person. Come on. Nice. <laughs> nice. 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 <laughs> the women, oh, the women want to know if the myth is true. Go ahead. It is. It is. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. We're going to Carol territory right now. <laughs> All right. You gotta keep the this. rumors are true. <laughs> family friendly. Family friendly. All right. Well, yeah. Are we family are friendly? Favorite, the long distance we... comedians. And uh, I'm going to start plotting you guys on a map to make our tour. Oh. All right. Let's see. Who we got next? Funky Sam Medina. Yeah, in yo. Northern California. Hey, you should bring dive bar comedy to this dive bar. That'd be oh. cool. Yeah, the Brennan Lounge. Shout out to Brennan Lounge. So, uh, oh, cool. So that's a that's a bar near you? Yeah, that's a bar in San Jose. I perform there uh, sometimes. Athena just did a Mother's Day show there uh, last week or whatever week Mother's Day was. <clears throat> well, I need to go up there anyway. My new job is based in San Francisco. Ooh. And my parents are based in Modesto, which I have to visit. So are you guys hiring? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Depends what you can do. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Depends what you can do. But uh nice. anyway, so how how's it been going out there? Things are good. Things are good. Yeah, we're getting out there, we're hitting mics, we're we're mingling with other comedians and the it's it's cool. It's it's really fun. We have a show. We're producing a show at a, a local club called Tommy T's here in Pleasanton, and uh, hypothetical comedy on Wednesday, June first. I'm super excited. Awesome. So hypothetical comedy is your brand name. 
Yes, right? that is my wife's and I brand. Oh, okay. Because when you're saying we, I didn't know who the we, other person yeah. was. No, my you wife is my partner. And we Aww. do hypothetical comedy together. We've been doing it uh, for a long time now. And so we've been doing shows since before the uh, the pen, pen dam. I like that. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, it's a great name. Hypothetical comedy. And uh, that's awesome. Where's your wife? Why do I never meet, never meet her? I only meet you. Uh, she's around. I don't know. She's somewhere. <laughs> Okay. Oh my God. The kid, I don't know if you can hear them. They're, they're really getting they're really getting riled up out there over the TV because they're very specific about what they want to watch, but yet they don't know how to use the remote control. So I'm the remote control. It's very annoying. Anyway. All right. Uh, I don't see anybody else. Am I missing someone? Uh Belinda Carl. Belinda Carroll. There she is. Well, Linda Carroll, welcome to the show. Where are you coming in from? I'm coming from Los Angeles, California. You're where here. My, my, um, my, my power went out about five minutes ago. Okay. And, uh -huh. and so I'm talking to you via ring light, which is on my computer. And I didn't realize how miracle that was, but here we are. <laughs> 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 I don't know how that works either. I'm, I'm on a phone, so my phone doesn't really need to be plugged in uh, to do Zoom. But anyway, so that's cool. What have you been doing in, in stand-up? You've been getting out there? Yeah, I did. Uh, I've done the comedy chateau a couple times since mm -hmm. I've been here. Um, I've got a show at the Virgil on June 14th. Um, I've got a couple of shows coming up at like Airliner um and i'm hoping to get up at the store at some point but i haven't even been there yet so i've only been here since january so okay. i've been acclimating and uh, doing a lot of auditions which is great i have an agent so i'm like uh i just got done with an audition like i just literally got done with an audition and then i have to go and do another audition once we get off here and so i'm just doing a ton cool. of auditions and trying to land some shit so. How'd you get an agent so fast if you've only been in LA since January? Um, I got an agent before I, before I came. So okay. I, I had an agent when I landed, um, essentially. So I started a festival called Portland Queer Comedy Festival <laughs> um, in 2017. And, uh, and it was a big hit. And so we got a lot of national write-ups. And uh, that kind of put me on the map. Uh, so now I have a lot of like national and international attention, which is good. And then um, I won an award for my state, uh, the Woman of Achievement Award. And uh, it's only been given to like one of uh, like a hundred women in the history of Oregon. And so I won that. And like, so I had a lot of heat underneath me. And so I just started approaching agents. And so I did an awesome. agent audition uh, showcase and I got an agent. You're a go-getter and you're uh, an administrator on one of my favorite Facebook groups, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Comedy uh, Pro Pals. So yeah, yeah. I'm an administrator. I've been an administrator for like years, but then Barbara kind of uh, isn't is too busy to to deal to deal with it. So I took over. So yeah, it's one of my favorite groups. If you're a uh, female identified person or a trans man, so no cis dude, sorry, uh, you should go on this group because we uh, exchange information. We also exchange, uh, you know, like who's hiring, like who's hiring for writing, what they need. There's little workshops and stuff like that. So we try to encourage, uh, you know, P, uh, non, let's say, uh, marginalized groups in comedy to soar and do the things. Awesome. Well, yeah. there's a lot of helpful information on there. I remember Carol's a member. I see her on there all the time. And uh, I'm happy to finally meet you face to face. All right. So I guess uh -huh. that's our whole crew. You have anything else? You look like you want to say something, Belinda. <laughs> no, I just said oh. hi. Okay. There's a lot of crying on my end. I'm, I don't know if you guys can hear it. It's getting really intense. So I better mute myself and let Mr. C bring us to the show. There's a lot of crying on my end too, but it's on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. She had to deal with the infamous Kazoo, which is her youngest son. Uh, he is a rowdy character, oh. uh, to say the least. Let's He's definitely going to be a comic. Um, oh. Oh. Anybody that cries out loud is definitely going to be a comedian. Oh. Um, so, 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, you get oh, that on. Also, okay. I'm a little jealous. I want to be in the group. I know I'm sis, but I'm cute as fuck. <laughs> you are super bitch, cute, bitch. I, I mean, I can act. I can act a little. You know, I can act a little. <laughs> I'm too cute, y'all. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I can act. Good. I can fit. The I know. Flow. I know. I know. I'm just jealous. Well, yeah. you'd be That's you'd be like welcome you. at any other group that I had, but. I have to adhere to Barbara's rules, otherwise she comes and haunts me. No, it's all good. I mean, shoot, I, I'm jealous of both political parties, so I've been running for president as an independent. It's like a thing I do. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> You're like independent, independent, politically <laughs> independent, gender independent, all of it. That's right. I'm going to start my own group for cute cis men <laughs> that could not be straight at all. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's right. like the the that's anti-pro right. pals group. We're going to call it suspect. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they call All it Twitter. Right. That's called Twitter. <laughs> so, <laughs> right? Right. This behind me is my um is my my uh podcast that I'm in the process of making that is uh people's first time to a gay bar talking about that. Nice. And then uh and then we and then I make them pick four uh songs out from the from that era of the time that they went to the gay bar. And then talk about how being at the gay bar changed them. Now that you could be on. If nice. you want to be on that, nice. I'd love to have you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because nice. you look like you'd have a great story about it. Oh, so, yeah, I got yeah, yeah. multiple stories. I got my real life stories. And then I got my, my childhood story. My first experience with a gay bar was Police Academy. But they went to the Blue Oyster. Okay. My musical choices would date me so Facebook bad. Facebook me about that. Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt no me. More. No <laughs> What is love? <laughs> Lady, don't hurt me. Pump. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's pump how we warm it up. It, it. So let's get into the game and whatnot. Of course, it's a dive on comedy show. I'm Mr. CD Enforcer, and you were clearly way turned the fuck up. I apologize, but I can't stop myself. So you guys ready to get into the show? Can I get a yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. All right, all right, all right. So I see I got me a couple of honeys. Uh, Joe or Carol, are you going this week? I'm down. You're yeah, let Carol go. I, I'm getting screamed out of my own house, so. <laughs> good. So we had a great addition, Miss Carol, to the show. She recently just announced that she was going on what's called the Bullet Wound Tour uh, to Bakersfield <laughs> and Englewood and Compton. So if you like bullets and jokes, make sure uh, you go with Carol on her tour around the uh, most safe places. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So we're going to go ahead. We always like to bring our East B stuff because we don't want to keep them up too late. And I believe, did you say you're in South Carolina? Dakota. 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 Oh, Dakota. Oh, God. One of the worst places in America. Just want to let everybody oh, know. Oh, my God. <laughs> but the good thing about South Dakota and a place he is, unlike Los Angeles, he actually gets fucking paid to do comedy. So he's better than all of us out this bitch. That's Hollywood fuck. So you guys ready to get it laid down by the SD master himself? Can I get a yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. What I'm about. that's what I'm talking about. Also, I like his name because he calls himself something very strange, a little uh-huh, may we in itself. My last name is Anthony, which is also a French last name. So his peoples probably used to own me. So you guys get ready for a man that owns everything, including <laughs> comedy. Let me get a clap, 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 clap for French accent. Hello. Uh, how, 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 how are we doing tonight, the internet? I, 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 I own a plantation. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know. I was, it, it's crazy because I, I don't even have a driveway in this house. It is in the mountain, like there's dwarves beneath. <laughs> I have French accent, and I'm doing one-liners and puns. For example, I knew a tweaker. He was a real jerk. He was methamphetamine. <laughs> it's going to be a long 30 minutes. <laughs> 
Uh, you know it's called when a cougar has her menstrual cycle? A historical period. All right. Not <laughs> that joke in, in, in dive bars because there's always some old bar flies and they growl and it's like a side sound effect anyway. I think solitaire is a weird game. Who invented solitaire? How did it happen? Had to be like, I don't know, in the 1400s or something and there was some loner guy watching everybody socialize and play a card game and he's like so you think you can enjoy ourselves socializing playing cards well one can play that game what the hell it's weird in some religions stars are really angels and angels are really stars but in hollywood stars are really celebrities and celebrities are really Really sex offenders. <laughs> Puts a whole new spin on touched by an angel, doesn't it? I came out here looking for a part in a movie, not some part inside of me. And it is never the part you expect. That's the, the, the real M. Night Shyamalan. I don't know if you realize this, the Pope used to have to pay rent to live in the Vatican. It was on a monthly or a per annum basis. Well, until this one gangster Pope came along and he was all like, fuck the Pope, please. Only he, he, he was Italian, so it came out more fuck the Pope police. That, that was the honorable pontiff Ignatius Ice Cubus. He, he, he was a vicar with an attitude. That is a clever joke. I don't give a shit. I will tell that joke. It makes me happy inside. You know what you call a Hebrew with a very low pH balance and acidic Jew. <laughs> or, or Barbara Streisand. Let me tell you, let me tell you how she's doing. I did a secret underground show out in Malibu during the pandemic. I told that joke. After the show, she came up to me. She said, actually, I've got a very high pH balance. It's very high. I said, oh, you're not acidic. You're basic. All right. <laughs> that is how I lost this eye. You wondered about the eye patch? One joke. I, I, I laughed. She laughed. We laughed. She went to give me a peck on the cheek. Her nose got me. Bitch got a beak. That, that's a 90s joke. That's that's a 90s. But it's South Dakota, so that shit is like contemporary. All right? Uh, I think the word nutshell is a weird word because if you add an apostrophe, it means something totally different. It could be nutshell or a nuts hell, which if you think about it, it makes sense. If you were a nut and you're stuck in the shell and you'd never get to germinate and produce other nuts, that would be kind of a hellish existence. You know, you're, you're as a nut, you are supposed to reproduce and germinate, not be somebody's peanut butter. Anyway, in a nutshell, a nuts shell is a nutshell. It's <laughs> the purpose of that wordplay. English is weird. English is weird. You might see somebody doing something and you'd be like, well, that's something the old me would do. But technically, the old you was younger than you are now. So the young you was the old you, and the today you <laughs> is the old you, even though you're not the old you. What the fuck? <laughs> Makes no sense. All right, I got the one minute, so I, I, I'll leave you with this. I don't know if this is going to go well or not. It's new. Fuck it. I'm depressed. Huh? Let's try it. Anyway, Amber Heard, right? TMZ once said Amber Heard had the most beautiful face. She's not going to be remembered for that, all right? That's <laughs> the thing. I mean, it doesn't matter how this trial turns out. Johnny Depp has won the war. There's no coming back. They're, they know it, too. They're like, yeah, well, he had a jar of cocaine. Oh, he had a jar of cocaine? She shit in the bed, all right? Oh, oh, he, he was passing out from the heroin. Oh, he was passing out. She shit the bed, all right? She's like, no, the dog, the shit was the size of a dog, all right? That dog's not some freaking Morty monster. 
I don't really have a closer. I just wanted to yell about that for a little bit. I thought that would be good. Um, I should do something funny. Uh, you know what you call a Chinese guy? Free bass and cocaine? Cracky Chan. All right. <laughs> Fresh accent, a.k.a. Kevin Bennett. God bless you all. Good night. <laughs> Yes, I know. All right. Oh, uh, French accent, <laughs> aka Kevin Bennett. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Amber Turd. Amber Turd. Amber Turd. Did she really shit on that man's bed? Yes. Yeah. Up the deuce. She That's what horrible woman. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Johnny <laughs> said that. Uh, she she dropped a grumpy on the bed. <laughs> he dropped so a grumpy. If you watch it, he's like he's like. Well, she tried to blame it on the dog, but I've walked the dog. I've cleaned up after the dogs, and I'm familiar with the dogs, and that did not come from the dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> almost exactly what he said. It's you know, you fucking nailed it, and you sound just like him. You fucking nailed it. Yo, Fra oh, Fra Frank, dude, I love you. Mercy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Right, aka French Death, the Amber Turd Killer. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. So we always alternate boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Um, we actually got two new ladies to the show. So I'm gonna take them in the order I got them and bring up one of them right now. Uh ooh. So you guys ready for this next comedian? Can I get a year? Yeah. 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 So like most of us, this unfortunate person is in Los Angeles being probably doing comedy for free. Um, <laughs> but it's love. That's why we do this. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. My, my mother is still proud of me. That's what's important. So you guys ready to get a big yeah. 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 All right, all right. I like this guy's name. We used to call him Mad Pie on the block. I also used to drive a Dodge Charger, baby, and that's how her comedy is charging down your heart like a Dakota. Let me get a clap, 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 clap for Margaret, the Mad Pie Dodge. Woo! All right. Hey. Wow. Thank you so much, Mr. C. It's it's so great to be with all my new friends at the bar. <laughs> be here. Uh, I'm Margaret Dodge. I'm bipolar and loving every other minute of it. <laughs> so that's exciting. Um, I am a relative newcomer to Los Angeles. I am a New Yorker and I'm starting to get, um, I don't know, a few clues that maybe Southern California isn't for me. Uh, <laughs> Someone described the sunshine here as abundant. And I was like, I think you mean relentless. <laughs> <laughs> but I did take a risk uh, moving here in midlife, you know, big adventure. I took a risk. And basically, because I'm not a billionaire, so living in California is the closest I'm going to get to uh, living on another planet, basically. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so enjoying observing all the alien life forms here. Yes. Um, so it's great to see you all. Honestly, I, I would feel a little bit more comfortable if you were all cats. <laughs> um, hey, we're online. It's, 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 it's an online show. So if you got them, Feel free to grab your pussies. You know, <laughs> the Zoom stars of the Pandam, the pussies, the cats. Uh, okay, so I am actually a feral cat trapper. Anyone else? <laughs> anyone? No? No one else? Linda, are you? <laughs> I have, yes. You have. Yeah. You've dabbled in it. For my, my, You've dabbled in well, it. Well, my I haven't been here long enough, but my last, my last place, I was a feral cat trapper. Very good, very good. Well, yeah. I'm pretty hardcore, hardcore feral cat trapper. If you don't know what that means, uh, I trap feral cats. These are cats who are not suited to adoption to live in homes. 
Um, I go and I get them spayed and neutered and I put them back on their turn. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, I'm the Planned Parenthood of feral cats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, uh, you know, at least that species will have reproductive freedom, you know, if nothing else, if nothing else. Uh, so I estimate that I have gotten uh, either TNR, trap, neuter, return, or, or adopted into homes, hundreds of cats, okay, over the years. And, you know, it's interesting, my cat rescue work has made me more sensitive to the needs of, to, to all animals in need. So that might have been me. Uh, calling the city animal welfare line about um, the raccoon with the limp, for example, mm -hmm. or um, the pigeon outside the grocery store uh, who looks a little woozy. You know, I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker. So that's me. But listen, when I branch out into baby skunk rescue, <laughs> it's over for you, hoes. Okay. <laughs> you've been warmed you've been warmed uh let's see um so i have three cats of my own and yes two of them did come from the streets i try to keep strict boundaries you know i try to like adopt out the rescues and but every now and then i break my rules and i i keep one and in the cat risk rescue business, that's known as getting high on your own supply. <laughs> yeah, so um, let's see. Uh, that's all the cat material I have. What else can I tell you? I, um, I don't have any kids. I'm at an age where I really have to make a decision. I think I have about 10 minutes left. <laughs> Um, I got a, uh, I got a weird offer from a guy. I mean, what woman hasn't gotten a, a strange proposition from a dude? This, this guy, wants <laughs> me, yeah, right. This guy wants me to, uh, pose for his nudie site called Barely Fertile. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, in this economy, it could be a decent career path. I'm just saying. So I don't know if you've noticed, uh, those of you who buy tampons uh, may have noticed a lot of states, New York, California, a whole bunch of other states have uh, made tampons into non-taxable items. They used to be taxed, but in many states they are no longer, they are non-taxable items. So what do you think about that? That's, it should be taxed. Yeah, great. I mean, just as I'm starting to wind down operations, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can I get some retroactive reimbursements? Right. I don't know. It's not, it's not right. It's not. So uh, thanks for validating me. I appreciate that. I went to the doctor recently and I was like, what the hell, you know, while I'm here, let me just get a fertility test. And um, the doctor was like, I don't think you can have kids, but you can maybe still squeak out a podcast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, so I am in a phase they call perimenopause, mm -hmm. and I actually think that is super fucking cool because that's also my drag king name. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've pretty much given up on online dating, um, but every now and then I go on just to check and make sure everyone's still an idiot. Um, they are, but one thing I've noticed that's, that's really, uh, mind boggling is the number of men on dating sites who spell their own names wrong in their profile, <laughs> <laughs> their own name, 
right? But I'm trying to be, you know, uh, just chill and, and, and non-judgmental. So maybe I should just give brain a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I closed on that. It's a little bit of a slow burn because it does require some spelling on you, but you've been a great audience. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that's right. Another round of applause for Maggie Dodge the Charger. Yeah. Wow. Woo. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Dating sites are the fucking worst. I just want to say that. Uh, and, and, and I'm a pretty good looking guy, right? I think. <laughs> Dog. I can't get nothing but heavily tattooed women who look like demons. I'm oh, not. no. And I'm not <laughs> I talk about, at first, I'm like, ooh, she got all these tattoos. Oh? What is that? It's like, oh, she accepted me. And then I think about going on a date for a second. I was just like, Carl. You are too beautiful. I mean, you could be in Miss Belinda Carroll's group if you weren't so cis. Die <laughs> 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 for that shit. You know what I mean? Do <laughs> so, it. <this> is the worst. <laughs> Another round of applause, guys, once again for Maggie. Woo. Right, 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 right. <laughs> So we're yeah. going to keep flipping and jump right into our next comedian. This is another one of our classic dive bar comedy veterans. He has been with us since way back in the day. And what I like about him, there is a diversity. He is almost like the Obama of comedy. He looks like a Samoan. He looks like an Asian. He looks like a, a, a Mexican. He looks like an Italian kid who loves his mother's fucking food. This man is everything and anything. And he's got one of the best names, sponsored by a man named Tone Lo, super funky. So you guys ready for this next comedian? Can I get a yeah? Yeah. 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 This man is the FSM and that's not a sexual position. Let me get a clap, 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 clap. The funky, Sam, the diverse, Medina. Yeah. 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 Comedy, hell yeah. Hey, Mr. C, thanks for the, uh, the world-class intro. I love... Uh, Come down here and get in those, you guys. Hey, what's up, Dive Bar? How's it going? Woo! Hell yeah. Before I get started, I want to warn you guys. Um, I just took a Viagra, and I'm not telling myself, so I go for like 12 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if you're doing a comedy online and you don't tell yourself, it's like having random unprotected sex. I mean, sure, everything could be fine, uh, but you could also run the light and get syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you guys? It's true. I've been doing comedy online too long, you know? I've been doing comedy online like a year, two years, six years. I lost track of time. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you this, though. One thing that people did know about California is that we have recreational cannabis dispensaries. One thing people did not know is that a lot of dispensaries, they deliver. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes I'll call the weed guy and I'll call the pizza guy and I'll make them race to my house. <laughs> <laughs> I did that joke at a show one time. This guy in the audience stood up and he yells, who wins? And the answer, <laughs> obviously, is me. <laughs> Hell yeah, it's true. Uh, I work from home now. I work from home. Working from home is pretty cool. I think the weirdest part about working from home is now I'm just stealing toilet paper for myself. <laughs> yeah. I think the best part about working from home is I can finally say I do my best work in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. I used to work, uh, before this, I used to work at a car dealership. Uh, the way that I got that job is I went in to go buy a car, and when they realized I couldn't afford one, they gave me a job instead. <laughs> Hell yeah. It beats my old job. I used to work at a drugstore. I can't tell you what it's called, but there are three letters involved, and it sounds like an STD. <laughs> no, for it does. It's like, hey, I need to go to CVS to get the cream for that CVS I got last night. <laughs> You guys. I remember this day this guy came in and he goes, hey, do you guys sell screwdrivers? And I go, no, but we do sell orange juice and vodka separately. <laughs> day. Hell yeah, that was my last day. Uh, I, used to work, uh, I used to work at this Mexican restaurant called Fat Burrito and all the employees had to wear a shirt that said Fat Burrito except for mine, it just said Burrito. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm not trying to brag here, you guys. I'm not trying to brag or anything. Uh, but I decided to deal with Netflix and I'm pretty excited about it. Woo! Yeah, hell yeah. I get three months for a dollar. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't have any tattoos. This joke works a lot better in person. I have no tattoos uh, because when I was growing up, my mom would always tell me, never get tattoos because when you get in trouble with the law, it's easier to identify you. <laughs> yeah, let me repeat that. She said, when you get in trouble with the law, she could have just said, don't get in trouble with the law, you guys. <laughs> so I guess the moral of the story is uh, don't listen to your mother, especially <laughs> if she's been in prison. <laughs> um, uh, whenever I send dick pics, I always put in one of those little mini Coke cans next to it for size. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, you guys. I don't send dick pics, uh, but I do send unsolicited shit pics. <laughs> I'll be in the bathroom and be like, oh, man, Mr. C's got to see this. This <laughs> <laughs> waste go to waste. <laughs> I, started, uh, I started Instagram for one of my poops, and uh, it got more followers than me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, you guys. <laughs> I don't have an OnlyFans, uh, but I do have an OnlyFan. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll be here today. Uh, I have a lazy eye. It's cool though, you know, because it matches my personality. <laughs> um, my my uh, uh, the other day I got so high uh, that my cat could talk to me, but she still didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys, my cat is an asshole. Like I came from, I came home the other day. She was on the back of this chair, and I leaned down to give her a kiss, and she's like, "Oh, like so far that she fell off the chair." <laughs> and then she pulled that pepper spray. And I'm like, you don't even have any thumbs. <laughs> I love that cat too. Uh, I do everything we can for her. Like we found the food that we gave her wasn't good for her. So I stopped giving it to her immediately, which was pretty good timing because the kids are almost out of cereal. <laughs> <laughs> I just found out, you guys, that she's not allowed to go to the vet anymore unless she's sedated. Yeah, they said that she tries to fight everybody in the office. And I'm like, I know, I taught her that. I tell my cat self-defense, you guys. <laughs> yeah, because of boy cats. <laughs> and I was like, hey, if a boy cat ever puts his paws on you, just give him one of these, you know, just give him one of these. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't supposed to end up in vet jail, you guys. She wasn't supposed to. No, it's okay though, because she didn't have any tattoos. <laughs> she had no tattoos, so I checked out. My friend called me up. He's all excited. He's like, dude, I got a new job. I'm a bouncer now. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm a bouncer too. Uh, but he didn't believe me. So I wrote him a check. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did, I get, did I get the light, Carol? I'm not sure. Yes. I, I did. Okay. Okay, you guys. I'm going to leave you with this. Um, I just joined Tinder recently. I just joined Tinder. But it's not what you're thinking. It's not what you're thinking at all. I joined this. It's a really hot girl. And then I messaged all the guys. I'm like, hey, come see me in Dive Bar Comedy on Tuesday night. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. Classic dive bar comedy right there. Because not only was it entertaining, not only was it emotional, but it was educational. What he taught us, the ladies, you can learn from Sam. Next time you get an unsolicited dick pic, Send an unsolicited shit. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is going to stop 90% of the time. You might get one motherfucker that's like, yo, can I get three more? Like, this is my shit. This is my shit. Two girls in a cup. Two girls in a cup. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, all right, dude. I'm blocking you. I, th I did that backfire. So, yeah, another round of applause for Funky Sam Medina. Yeah. Funky Sam Medina. That's what I'm talking about. All righty, right, right, right. So we're going to jump into another comedian. We got what we got. Three more left going on here. Ooh, this next comedian is also a new family favorite. She's a talented comedian. You know what I like I heard from this comedian when she came to LA? She did it the right way. I wish I'd have had somebody rub my balls before I came and put me on the line. <laughs> did. Because what she did, she said, you know what? Before I hit these LA streets, I'm going to build my name. Then I'm going to come here with the agent. And then what I'm going to do is every day with my free time before I have to get a job like Carl did and can't do anything fun anymore, I'm going to go to tryouts and auditions every day before this story. She didn't want before this. She don't want after this. This woman, you don't know it yet, but you're going to know who this woman is one day. 
and you better get ready. You guys ready for this next comedian? Can I get a yeah? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> also, I'm very jealous because she doesn't think I'm cute enough for her Facebook group. But that's a whole other thing. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Let me get a clap, 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 clap for Belinda, the EMP, Carl. Hey. Oh. hey, everybody. Yeah. It's sit down comedy on my bed. Um, <laughs> I, um, I wore this outfit, and now that I'm in the camera, I didn't realize I just look like Snow White after the divorce. <laughs> and it's just like, just tired man uh i am working a day job uh i am working a day job and auditioning and doing shows what? so that is the reason i am high for the show i um <laughs> am thrilled to be here i haven't talked to people in um it feels like months and i feel like i'm i i've i uh i uh moved here and then i was like oh i should start dating and this is the thing is that I'm I'm a lesbian lady and I don't look like a lesbian lady. And so that makes it difficult. And beyond that, like I thought I knew what I wanted. I was like, I want somebody with a nice five-year plan and a 401k and kind of has their shit together. And now I'm just like, do you know how to skin a squirrel? <laughs> right? I'm just like, are you serious? Like if you know how to build an outdoor fire, then please contact me because I need a partner in the apocalypse right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's just like, everything's fucking insane. I uh, uh, am, am uh, just going crazy. So in October, I went to the Bible Belt. Yeah. And um, I uh, was, I did a tour and I did like all of these cities and, uh, and I got to be in the belt, Bible Belt. And <laughs> I'm telling you what, I just... You know, I had somebody say to me, like, you know, homosexuality is against the Bible. That's why y'all can't get married. And I'm like, dude, if God thought homosexuality was such a big deal, don't you think he would have put it in the top 10? <laughs> In instead, it's in Leviticus, which is the glamour magazine part of the Bible. <laughs> it's, it's like no shellfish, no mixed fibers, no white shoes after Labor Day. <laughs> or however that works maybe that's why they call it the bible belt maybe that's why <laughs> uh, i i've been um uh dealing with thing at work so uh so i uh i lost some weight and i just realized recently that um i've lost too much weight because white guys started hitting with on me <laughs> And it's the, and it's not all white guys either. I'm telling you, there is, a, and I, I, it is always a dude with the sunglasses on the back of his head, and then the, oh, no. the Hurley shirt for some reason. Oh, no. I'm like, am I your wild Saturday night? Like, what's happening? And like, <laughs> I'm a lesbian, so this is like developing a superpower that I never wanted, just like <laughs> the ability to manifest a shit ton of cilantro for no reason. <laughs> I'm like, what do I do with this much cilantro? <laughs> and the thing is, is that like cilantro is fine, but for like, like 80% of the population is fine with it. 20% it tastes like soap. And yep. it's always trying to get in my taco. <laughs> it's very frustrating. <laughs> um, I brought no beverage, so that's comfortable. Um, I... Uh, um, I'm looking at my notes. I, um, oh, I thought of a good tag for your kitten abortion or your kitten uh, feral cat mom joke, which is uh, you should, the Planned Parenthood analogy. You should say, uh, because my business is also 10% abortions. <laughs> because then people will be sad about kitten abortions and then you can call them out on it. It's fine. Um, I, am what am I doing right now I don't even know man this is the thing is that I don't even know if I want to date like I'm on this app that's specifically for lesbians it's called her and uh and so I got on there and I have people that are like liking me and I'm just like I don't even know if I want to go through with it because the thing is is that like I've kind of been celibate since the beginning of the pandemic and like this shit now looks like the yard around an abandoned building <laughs> Woo! the bush. Just the grass yeah. is all overgrown. There's like two pit bulls fighting for no reason. 
<laughs> it's like a little broken down Camaro. <laughs> uh, I got a Starbucks up the street now, so we're gentrifying. It's going to be good. <laughs> I, uh, I'm telling you, I'm just like, I just like don't want anybody to see me naked, not because I'm ashamed of my body, just because I don't want to go through the grooming process. Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> it's very frustrating. Um, I think I'm almost out of time. What do I want to talk about? I don't know. This is what I want to say. Um, thank you for Zoom shows because when the pandemic first started, I was like, what the fuck am I going to do? Like, the thing is, is that like 90% of my dopamine comes from stand up comedy. So I was just like, oh no. <laughs> so just the existence of the Zoom shows is amazing. And if you're watching this on Facebook uh, live, I appreciate you so much for tuning in. I'm working on this. This is my first gay bar, which is my podcast where I interview somebody about their first gay bar experience and also what they thought it was gonna be like and like whatever, and then talk about how it changed their lives. And then we have a dance break and it's a real fun time. So check that out on X-Ray FM or whatever. Also, if you produce podcasts, you'd like to help me edit it. I'm very ADD and could use that. Okay, love you, bye. Nice, nice. Once again, another job bar spectacular. Dropping knowledge, dropping fun, and dropping education. Number one, she let us know she talked about dating in LA. Now, the first thing she let us all know is that the first mistake we've all made is trying to date in LA. <laughs> first mistake. <laughs> first mistake we all made. Now, she mentioned some good stuff. She said she needs somebody to skin a squirrel. And also yep. start a fire. Now I'm gonna tell you, there's two people in the world that guaranteed know how to do this shit. Number one, those assholes with the oak leaves on the back of their head. I know, I know. The Harley Davidson shirt that go to that Harley <laughs> shop. Oh, they know how to skin a squirrel and make a fire from the squirrel dead body. I know, I know. They don't use the show from the skin. These motherfuckers is bad. So I need that. Not I need that your husband. <laughs> now. I understand though, but this is LA, one of the LGBTQ capitals. I'm from Philadelphia, which has the largest gay parade in the country. Oh, yeah. the country. So we yeah. know the deal. LA also has a very large community. I'm going to give you a tip as the lesbian. First, you want to look like for a lady that looks like Margaret Dodge. No disrespect for her, just say. Short hair, <laughs> smooth, clean, not too much makeup doesn't do all that bullshit, maybe has a couple <laughs> cats, right? <laughs> but then make sure she's wearing a plaid shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you. Yeah. Oh, I know. That's the love of your life right there. And I've done the best I can. Brown <laughs> you're not, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. I'm just telling you, I look, I ain't no lesbian, but I know how to fall in love. Actually, I am a lesbian. I love women. <laughs> total I know, Mr. C, you're the one wearing a vest and a tie, so. Hey, I'm a total lesbian. No shirt. I'm a total lesbian. I'll tell you, I just want to get a plaid. It's kind of plaid. You know how it's kind of a plaid tie? Because I'm working on my lesbian swag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's like it. flashy. It's like flamboyant. It's like bathhouse lesbian. <laughs> 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 it's very confusing. I'm going to get Melinda's group. I'm working on it. I swear to God. <laughs> All right. So we got two more comedians coming to the stage. You guys ready for the next minute? Can I get a yeah? Oh, yeah. 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 Ooh, this guy's a family favorite. And he is a character. He is also a fashion dynamo. He is rocking the look of looks. We call it the middle split. It's also how Belinda's coochie hairs look. So it's extremely <laughs> <laughs> just as long, same texture. You know, you, you know your best hair is down there. I'm like, God, I wish my hair up here was like this hair. I'm like, God, it's the good hair. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And also, bring back the bush. Um, look for somebody older. We love that muffed stuff. So that's all right with me, too. Um, this gentleman right here is also a super talented guy. One of our favorite classics. He has been doing the dive bars since the days before dive bars with dive bars. His name is related to a great book that had a wonderful play. It sounds like Goose. And his comedy <laughs> is like that. And I need you to hop in the spruce goose of Goose. 
<laughs> That's right. Get inside, Mr. Smithers. Get inside. <laughs> That's what we're eating right now. So let me get a clap, 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 but anyway, yeah, so I'm not in L.A. anymore. I'm in uh, Illinois, and uh, but I lived in L.A., and I loved it. I loved L.A., dude, and the thing, but the problem was it was expensive, guys. You guys remember? You guys remember all the dick you had to suck to pay rent? Yeah. Um, Twice a day. Oh, my, yeah, right? If, if it's like a 1000 bucks a month, that's what, 30 dicks? Um, <laughs> <laughs> It was bad, dude. It was bad, dude. It, and and now with this Roe versus Way shit, dude, it's gonna fuck everything up. It really is, dude. I'm gonna explain to you, dude. So I was hungry, bro. I was real, real. I was starving, emancipated. I was starving, dude. And then I found this dumpster with the juiciest, tastiest fucking treats. And it was great, man. Behind a Planned Parenthood. Um. Uh. Oh. Oh, I, you know what? That could go one or two ways. I did that shit in the Midwest, dude. I got, almost got lynched. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, as far as uh, as diversity and culture goes, I'm all for it, dude. I'm I... fucking bird. <laughs> I got an air fryer, motherfucker. All right. <laughs> He's laughing. <laughs> fucking bird's <laughs> laughing, dude. All right, so. Anyway, I'm I'm Dominican Irish, and that's like a, a like when a leprechaun bangs a piñata. I'm half Latino, <laughs> half half. I'm half Latino, half racist. Um, <laughs> and 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 but Dominicans, man, we're just like we're we're not racist at all, man. Like we're just like black people. We just got off the boat first. <laughs> it's a true story. Look it up on history, dude. I can't be wrong. Um, anyway. Anytime someone says I'm not a racist, but dude, that those, that motherfucker's a racist. Um, so anyway, so we've left LA, dude. Me, my girl, my dog, my bird, you know, in a U-Haul truck and shit, dude. And uh, and I forgot the fucking pet food. Like, you know, one day, and my girlfriend was like, "Yo, where's the pet food?" I'm like, "Shit, I forgot it in LA." She goes, "Well, fucking handle it." So I looked back at the bird and the dog. I said, "Um." There's no food. Can you guys figure this shit out? So now I just have a bird. Um, <laughs> he ate the dog. No, yeah, Peanut's still alive, dude. Peanut, Peanut. I love Peanut. I got him in East LA, dude. He's a fucking Chihuahua and shit, dude. Um, so when I got him here, dude, it was in a pandemic, and 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 I had to get him to get shots and shit, dude. So I I take him and 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 the there was a big fucking Trump sign at the at the vet, dude, and we like guns and. And yeah, and, and the N word can stay out, and it was just horrible, dude. But I walked in, I go, I need some vaccines. And I go, oh, no, I, I don't want you, you can't be doing no vaccines. And I go, oh, why not, dude? And he looks at me and goes, You'll make your dog autistic. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, what? He goes, You'll make the dog autistic. <laughs> I'm like, well, how will I know the dog is autistic? <laughs> and he looks at me, deadpan. This is a true story. <laughs> You, 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 you can't because he's a dog. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anyway, anyway, I, I digress. So we get that we get the Carbondale, Illinois, right? Dude? And then the fucking pandemic hits, dude. It is fucking global shutdown, dude. Global shutdown of fucking everything, dude. And I'm like, fuck, dude. And I, I did what any reasonable person does. I came down here. You can see it. This is my basement, right? Got pool mm-hmm. table, game table. Three monitors. I do all sorts of shit here, right? And and I I I, I have I just got out last week because I ran out of meth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no. But the pandemic. Look, the pandemic's been fine for me, dude. It really has because I like like I um I I work for a law firm from home and shit, dude. Right? So like I can just sit here. I can sit here. I can fucking. I can talk on the phone, dude. And they, these people don't even know who the fuck they're talking to, dude. I'm like, 
yeah, this is uh Bruce McCarthy uh, with the uh, with the the law company. I'm not going to give the name of the company online. You know. Mm-hmm. So uh, what what did you do? I raped five women. I'm like fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> fuck let, me, let me charge you more money, dude. Um, yeah, you better in this country. You better have a lawyer, or 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 better, Joe. Joe's a good lawyer, right there, dude. Wild Joe, dude. That look at her, dude. That bitch is a lawyer. Look at her. <laughs> because the cops, they're fucked up, guys. I, I, I said that, but I want to bring it back to a point. Dude. The cops are fucked up. The cops are fucked up. I'm serious, dude. Like, le- legitimately, let me explain this to you. Oh, God damn, someone's killing me. <laughs> okay. So the cops are all fucked up. Dude. They're seriously, seriously fucked up. Do you know in Carbondale, Illinois, it only takes 25 hours to get certified as a fucking police officer? 25 fucking hours, dude. It takes 1,800 hours to fucking learn how to cut hair. It took me <laughs> fucking 3,000 hours to get level 60 in World of Warcraft. Wow. <laughs> fucking fucking police and shit. And then when they do something wrong, dude, the first thing they do is they pop up on television and they go, I need to go ahead. Is that is that a one minute mark? Or are you calling yes. me a loser? Okay. One minute. One minute. <laughs> this is the fuck, <laughs> Carol. So what was I saying? Okay. Anyway. Where was I? Where was I? Uh Lindsay Gam is great. No, the we're cops. not gonna do that. The cops. The cops, dude. Fuck the cops, dude. But anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, so we did the cops. Uh one second. Whatever another. Oh, up that French accent guy. Where were you on January 6th? Um oh, well, I, was just, hey, man. <laughs> I was there, I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> And you had to climb up on the porta potty just to see that everybody was peeing. It was something. <laughs> All right, let's let's end with um. You know what? It looks like someone was talking about fucking the, <laughs> the Christian people and stuff. And I'm I'm Dominican, dude. And 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 look, it's confusing to come from a a, a Christian family nowadays, dude. I my my family was very devout hypocrites. they did all the right things don't get me wrong they did all the right things they fucking went to church every sunday they paid their fucking mafia money um their 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 tithes and shit and and hated the gays they did all the right thing dude you know um you know and and except they were hypocrites they're hypocrites they fucking absolutely 100 percent unadulterated hypocrites dude i remember this one story though I was like a five-year-old kid in the Dominican Republic, and I'm sitting there, dude. And they, they took me there for the summer so I could expand my horizons and get hepatitis C. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and I was like, okay, vamos para la iglesia, mara, hallelujah. And it was like 13 hours, motherfucking long. Sam Medina, you're like, let you know, you know what I'm talking about, man. With those Latin churches, man, <laughs> they stand up, they sit down, they stand up, they sit down, and you're like praying. You're like, Lord Jesus, please let this be over, because I'm, <laughs> so- <laughs> please let this be over, dude. And fucking they'll pass the plate, dude. And if there wasn't enough in the plate, you know what they do? They pass again. it again. <laughs> <laughs> again. Motherfucker needed his money, dude, for his <laughs> male hooker. Um, and then at, at the end, dude, if I was starving, I just couldn't wait for uh, communion. <laughs> Can I get some more body of Christ, please? <laughs> I think I think that was a minute. That's my time. It was it was great, guys. I love you all. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Another round of applause for the sexy Ted Kaczynski of the <laughs> Bruce Jesus yeah. McCarthy. You, you, you know, if I'm crazy, you shouldn't <laughs> fuck with me, dude. <laughs> about right that's right we got one more comedian coming up and also bruce brought up a great dive bar comedy thing even belinda talked about it earlier the christian scenario we're getting married god tripping on it in the bible the hypocritism and i thought about a great story i don't remember exactly but it was back with sodom and gomorrah when god was telling this one guy that was from outside of the yo i'm about to burn this shit down and he was like yo but it's a couple good motherfuckers out there let me go tell them right so he runs down to Sodom and Gomorrah. He's like, yo, God, about to burn this shit down, niggas. Yo, you got to come fuck with me. They, they was like some crazy dudes, so they got mad at the nigga. 
So they come to his house one night tripping, like 20 men. The outside was sticky. You should about to fuck him up. Mind you, God, he's just trying to be nice for God. They don't fuck him up. So he got three banging ass daughters in the crib, two or three. And he like, yo, fellas, <laughs> I know this shit is fucked up, but yo, take my motherfucking daughters and shit, man. They like, man, I don't want that bullshit. <laughs> so then he had a couple sons. They was like, yo, what up with your sons, though? <laughs> yeah, so that's the Bible. So we'll leave it at that. No, <laughs> hey, hey, m- Mister, Mister, you you've inspired me to do an hour and a half fucking Bible comedy show. I'm telling you, <laughs> you're Bible you know, stories. You've been, you have fucking inspired me for that. Dude. I'm telling you, yo, you should read this story, guys. It's like, yo, what? Oh, okay. And then the donkey told them, <laughs> <laughs> "Oh no, I'm reading Shrek." <laughs> and, and then the two daughters got their dad drunk and had sex with him. What? What? And God like, said, no, no shit. You. And God said, kill your son. Oh, no, just kidding. Oh, give me okay. Solomon, a righteous man. Cut the baby in half. Fuck him. <laughs> Fuck him. He's a baby and a bitch. Hey, I'm telling you, dude. Could do a fucking, you could do, you could do a whole bitch. series you know, on that shit. Did you are arguing. Let's just cut the baby in half. Get this you shit you are low-key <laughs> genius, man. Like autistic. Get <laughs> to Jesus. That's what I do. Um, but that's the by coming. We got one more comedian coming stage. Are you guys ready to see the hardest work comedian in Los Angeles? Can I get a yeah? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, this lady's a bad motherfucker. And once again, like she told you, she is so gangster. The Beverly Hills says, stop coming back because we're sick of the gunshots. <laughs> they sent her to Vegas, you know, they sent her to Englewood. And you better go to if you want to learn how to survive your father. <laughs> Belinda, get down there. Carol will teach you all it's about. Are you guys ready? Let me get a clap, 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 clap. The hardest working lady in the world's best slap, Carol Newell. <laughs> I know I look like a librarian, but trust me, I'm gangster AF. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I did not quarantine. I did not stay home during the pandy. Guys, I was out there doing comedy in the streets, in Woo. the wild, I like to say, in the parks and the parking lots of Los Angeles. That's what I did. I did mm-hmm. not stay home. Uh, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I, I know this is this is not the face of gangster rap, but I totally listen to gangster rap, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> like cruising down the street in my six phone, jacking the bitches, slapping the hoes, went to the hood to get the scoop, knuckleheads out there, cold suit. <laughs> so, yeah, I've been <laughs> listening to gangster rap since before there was gangster i remember when gangster rap was new you guys <laughs> yeah i sure did uh so i was at work one day listening to the gangster rap as you will and my coworker came by and he's like carol how can you be so black and so white at the same time <laughs> and i said uh i'm an enigma and he goes you can't say that at work that's racist <laughs> 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 I was like, no, 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 honey. I said enigma, not enigma. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was fun during the panel, you guys. It was really a lot of fun. All my shows now they all have ceilings. It's so boring. Uh <laughs> there's not even rain or anything. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so other than doing comedy, it's been a couple of you know rough years for all of us. Uh, I know. Like uh 2020 was terrible for me. I lost my job that year. My husband of 22 years that year, and I got the OG COVID. You guys, I got all of that. Uh, but it's okay, you guys. I did find another job, so we're all good. <laughs> mm. Yeah, me and the hubs, we're uh, uh, we were already separated for a year, so I got a free divorce. That's what I got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh he was in love with someone else that's why we were separated because uh yeah he was in love with this uh russian her name was smirnoff you guys <laughs> she was, mm, and that bitch killed him so not me not me uh yeah i did get the covid i also did lose my job but i found another job so yeah um i uh I got the COVID again this year for Christmas, right on Christmas Eve, both years, you guys. Santa's out to get me. I'm pretty sure that's what's going on. Uh, This year, I got the COVID-2 electric boogaloo. So, uh, (laughs) (laughs) uh, yeah, a lot of fun. (laughs) Um, I 
I have been back on the dating scene after a very long vacation, you guys. <laughs> like the last time I dated before this, it was uh, pagers and payphones, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago. Uh, and now it is mm, a plethora of penises, you guys. <laughs> Uh, it is a wealth of wang, a tail of dong, a phalanx of phalluses. It is a smorgasbord of schlong. It is a lot of dick pics, you guys. Is what <laughs> it is a lot of dick pics, like all the dicks all the time. Uh, yes, uh, I get all the dick pics. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I can't complain because I also got some of the dick to go along with it. So. <laughs> <laughs> i went back to dating after that very long vacation on the apps you guys that's what i did i went on the app uh the first app i went on our time for singles over 50 and uh those pictures were terrible you guys <laughs> <Those were awesome. laughs> hmm. saggy balls mostly is what that was <laughs> men over 50 don't send pictures please uh uh and i uh yeah i saw a lot there and i moved on i was like that's enough of that uh plus you know that app was for old guys so <laughs> i moved on to the plenty of fish where there were plenty plenty of fish yes but none of those fish were delicious they were just all the kind floating upside down in the river you guys not good fish <laughs> uh so i ended up where i should have started you guys at the blk the all black dating app because i prefer the dark meat you guys mm. <laughs> yeah uh yeah that that also mm. uh so yeah the rumors are true uh those pictures were uh larger than average on average <laughs> is what i'm saying uh, I'm not saying every black man has a big dick, but I am saying if a black man says he has a small penis, he means seven to eight inches. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been fun. I also found love on the BLK. Believe it or not, I found love on an app. Yes, I did on the all black dating app. True love. It's so delightful. Um, yep. I found a boyfriend and we're going on nine months now, you guys. That's a, that is a uh, long-term relationship at my age, you guys. <laughs> that is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, he also happens to be the whitest black man in Los Angeles, turns out, you guys. Super white. Yeah. Uh, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke. He uh, is an IT guy. He's a sci-fi nerd uh, and a Trump supporter. <laughs> yeah mm, had i known it would have never happened uh <laughs> and the only thing he really knows how to make is a sandwich with extra mayo so super white <laughs> <laughs> all right uh i'm gonna get out of here thank you so much for being here at the dive bar comedy back to you mr c Woo! <laughs> And also, uh, L.A., Bakersfield, and Compton Smoke Sport. And that was all of our comedians and whatnot. So round of applause for all of our comedians yeah. to be our comedy show. And we're not. I see you might have lost Blimp, but she said she had to try it out to do. So she's making sure she's doing her uh, Los Angeles thing, showing her boobs, promising to suck dick. <laughs> how to be successful and whatnot. Um, so mm. I'm just saying, since um, we got um, Margaret is new to LA, and so is Belinda, even though she may not hear it, she may not hear it, but I'm gonna sing an acapella of my Los Angeles song I made up, because every musician, when you come to LA, you gotta make an LA song. Uh -oh. I'm gonna sing that, and then this Wild Joe's gonna tell us where we're gonna go. Let's see what I got. <clears throat> oh, wait, let me turn the original sound on, so you don't mess with my shit. <laughs> We on the midnight train to Georgia. We in LA, California. Just ride to the beat, ride, ride to the beat, ride to the beat, ride, ride to the beat. I pull up on the broad light. Hey, bitch, yo, chill red light. I see where you gotta go. Take it to my home, gonna make your body blow. You looking real good, my eye. Red bottom looking real hood, ma. Let me treat you like a star. I'm break your knife and I give you all this dick raw. Let me tell you, baby boo. Because we do the shit how we do. And let me turn it, turn it up. Turn it, turn it up. Turn it, turn it, turn it up. It's a late man. 
tell you how we go to the place then. And let me take it down house, bring it to my home, then I take it down south. And I train <laughs> Georgia. We in LA, California. Just ride to the beat, ride, ride to the beat, ride to the beat, ride to the beat. And that's the Dive Bar Comedy Show, Miss Walter. Tell us we're going to Woo! Wow. I picked up on some lyrics that I never noticed in that song before. <laughs> <laughs> Slowed it down. And then the visual, I, I finally put two and two together. I know what you're talking about now. But uh, anyway, you guys, thanks for watching. If anybody is still watching this all the way to the end, that's awesome. And please come see us at a live show around LA. So we're doing the first Tuesday of every month is at Berkshire House LA. That's over by the Grove. And then the first Friday of every month is at the Witch's Brew up in the Valley, North Hills. So those are our next two shows. We do four shows a month at different bars. And then we're doing this live streaming show on the other Tuesdays. So it's great. Follow us at Dive Bar Comedy. Follow all of our comedians and uh, get to see what they're doing in their cities and in their touring all around the country. So Thank you guys for watching. Thank you to all of our comedians, to Carol and Mr. C, and we will see you next time. Good night, everyone. Good night. Hey, thanks for doing the show, everybody. Yay. Fun. Thanks for having me. Catch you guys later. Au revoir. <laughs>